is the Revisionary Podcast with your host, Juan Carlos. The Revisionary Podcast. Welcome to Redux, a podcast about music by a music lover for music lovers. I'm Van Berryman, math teacher by trade, podcaster by hobby, former radio host and production coordinator, and avid music lover. Step into Redux for deep looks into album reviews with a concise but thorough comparison of an artist's first album to their most recent and their journey to get there. Plus, top 10 lists, best ofs, and other musical inputs to get you through the day. If you like what you hear, drop a follow on Instagram at Redux Podcast and feel free to let me know there what reviews you want to hear. Come along on this journey with me, sit back, and enjoy the ride. This is the Revisionary Podcast. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Revisionary Podcast. And as always, I'm your host, Juan Carlos. If this is your first time listening, uh, the way this works is we bring on guests, usually comedians, to tell a nonfiction story about their lives in which they wish things had happened a little bit differently. Afterwards, I give guests the opportunity to tell the same exact story. It's like the second time they get to change any facts or details that they'd like about the story. Uh, before we jump into this, uh, let me just give you guys another reminder. If you haven't bought tickets yet, please make sure you uh, buy tickets to the Gig Harbor Beer Festival. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And like I said, uh, I'm going to ask Quentin if he wants to go, so I'll go. And you know what? Uh, I have another guest from Washington, uh, Chris Mejia, who will be joining us today. And uh, I'll see if uh, he wants to go, too. Uh, so, you know, just let us know. Feel free to hit me up in the DMs and uh, say hello or let me know if you're coming. And uh, I'll say hello to you. We could take a picture together someday. I don't know. Um, Something else that you should know is uh, Chris Mejia is going to be joining us. I'm, and I'm excited because uh, I met Chris randomly back in 2018. He was uh, <laughs> he was the first comedian I he was one of the first comedians. It was him and Barungi, if you remember Barungi from a previous episode, who I met from the state of Washington uh, in Seattle, and uh, I met him randomly in his room. Yeah, you know, after I got off set, he was like, "Oh man, I'm Dominican too." And I was like, "No, you're not. There's no way. There's more than two Dominicans in Seattle that don't play baseball. Like that can't." be a thing and especially the odds of dominicans who do comedy it, we're we're a small community i think i don't know but we you know we had a laugh about it he, he's a good guy so i'm excited to get him to sit down i've been trying to get him to sit down with me for a while but this man is busy so he's hard to get a hold of so i'm excited that he found some time in his day and his life and has decided to sit down with us so let's not dilly dally and uh let's go ahead and see if we can get him on the line Oh hey, <laughs> sorry, I didn't realize. I didn't realize the the phone call went through. What's up? Hey man, how you doing? Hey Chris, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. I <laughs> do you always answer the phone so sketchily? Is that how you pick yeah, up? <laughs> I don't trust any. I don't trust anybody out here. I just I don't like. I honestly I do not. If I don't have the number saved on my phone, I do not pick up, and and I will not call that number back. Unless they leave me a message or call again immediately. Because usually scam numbers will just call once and then like, yeah, I'll be call you again like the next day or whatever. Whereas like if it's like the doctor's office, they'll leave a message. If it's like someone trying to drop off some stuff, then they'll leave a message. Uh, but that's how I weed out the fakes. I just I leave you on red and then I wait for you to follow up problem with your theory is that uh they leave messages now i get messages from spam calls all the time so well i mean then i can just listen to the message and then i see that it's clearly a fake because they're just like your auto warranty is expired and i'm just like i have progressive like that don't expire um (laughs) i am still making payments i just made a payment yesterday so clearly you have the wrong information um fair enough i also want to know who balls for that like who's like oh my god my uh, like i need to renew my auto warranty i'm not saying that like like i'm i haven't been gullible enough to fall for a scam before but like i feel like an auto warranty expiration is just like that's easy to detect oh this is clearly a scam i mean honestly some yeah i mean that scam yeah i think it's hard to fall for but a lot of these scams are like really legit like i'm married to three nigerian prince right now 
You know what I'm saying? Like right now, because you know I I'm waiting for my inheritance. So it happens to people all the time. What if what if there actually is for some reason a Nigerian prince who really is falling on <laughs> tough circumstances and just is not aware about how there's just this running scam of Nigerian royalty scamming Americans out of money. So he just he reaches out to Americans and be like, I need help. I'm trying to feed my village and no one cares about him. <laughs> that that sounds like a personal issue. Um hold on. Uh I want to say Chris, officially, welcome to the revisionary podcast. Uh, <laughs> I'm really excited that you've decided to sit down with us and join us. Oh, thank you for having me. No, of course. So why don't you uh, tell the revisionaries a little bit about yourself and what you've been up to? Uh, So I'm a stand-up comedian based in Seattle. Um, I uh, do shows all across the state, as well as uh, often I'll travel across the West Coast to do shows. And my goal this year is to travel uh, more uh, outside of just the West Coast, but... Uh, I also co-host a show in Seattle called Good Comedy with the homie Bo Johnson. Um, we have done the shows at Bad Jimmy's Brewery, uh, the Palladium at Hales Ales, and now we're doing the shows at the Crocodiles New Comedy Club here after. Uh, if you want to find out about future shows, just follow us on Instagram at Good Comedy Show. Um, that's when we'll post about whatever show is coming up, uh, at which location. Cause we do shows at both bad Jimmy's and we do it at the hereafter, which is the crocodiles comedy club. Um, we'll also post about like lineups and who's on the show, stuff like that. Uh, and there's also a link tree where you can sign up to be on our mailing list, which I strongly recommend you do because every show we have done, every flagship show we've done has sold out in advance. Um, so it's just, it's a hot ticket item strongly suggest uh get your tickets early uh but myself you can also follow me at tofer mejia t-o-p-h-e-r-m-e-j-i-a at instagram twitter tiktok um twitch uh i do some streaming on twitch from time to time uh but on instagram and twitter and tiktok that's where i'm the most active uh where i post clips of either stand up or on tiktok i try to make uh, other sorts of funny videos that you should check out and like so then the algorithm stops uh, hating on me for some reason but uh, yeah uh, give me a follow I also post about upcoming shows there um, and also you can uh, you can add me on Venmo send me money I appreciate it I love I love free money that requires me to do nothing in return so so Here's the thing for those of you guys listening out there. I I want to point out that uh, the part about his show selling out is really not a flex. He, he legitimately does sell out every month. I only know this because I once asked Chris two months in advance if I could come to his show, and he was like, "Oh, yeah, you know me. You could DM me, and I'll put you on the wait list, and you might be able to come watch this show." So, <laughs> so was if I, I have not to, able like, to get you in. No, 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 no. So what, what happened was, uh, we by the time we worked it out, it was on a date where I was out of town, so oh, it wasn't okay. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you did say to well, me, and I'll add you on a wait list. <laughs> well, that was more of like so. Then I don't forget. Uh, but they do, yeah, they do sell out, uh, which is dope, and it, the shows have been really successful. Um, so we, I sh- strongly recommend buy tickets early. Let's go ahead and uh, jump right into your first story, Chris. Yeah, uh, the stage is yours. Please tell us your story. So this happened. Um, I re- I distinctly remember I was staying the I was staying the night at my girlfriend's place uh, back when she lived in an apartment. Um, now we live together, and uh, she was going to bed, but I was starving and I wanted food. And I opened up DoorDash, and I was like, oh, I could get like KFC delivered again because like she lived right next to like a KFC. Um, and I'm just a sucker for those chicken sandwiches, like fried chicken sandwiches. That is all mm-hmm. of the craze now. I'm just, a, even when they're bad, I still will go out of my way to get them. Um, mm-hmm. so I just wanted one of those and I was just like, like my girlfriend, she prefers that I eat healthy. So, uh, I was just like, no, let me not bring uh, like fast food into her apartment and it stinks up the whole place. Uh, cause if you're not into fast food, or fried food like like i feel like fast food and fried food 
is like a hot and cold thing in the sense where you're either all about it or you hate it and you loathe it. Um, so I was just like, let me not get that. And then I was like, oh, well, you know, I could get pho. Like I, 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 I can mess up some pho right now. And then like I was just doing the math of like, you know what? This pho place is really not that far. I should go pick it up. Like, come on. Like, let me save money. Let me be financially responsible and go pick up the pho. Mistake number one. So uh, I leave my apartment to go get pho. And I go to my car. I get in my car and I, I'm, a, I'm a good driver. Uh, I, I look before I pull. I don't just pull out. Like I look both ways. So when I look both ways, I see that there's no one. Cause I already, so then I start pulling out, like I start reversing out of my parallel park and I do one more look around to see if there's any cars. There's no cars. I'm good to go. And then as soon as I immediately pull out, out of nowhere, I see in my mirror, this like SUV that came out of nowhere, hits their brakes. Literally, if I would have gotten out of my space a second or two earlier, this car would have T-boned me at full speed. Um, they came out of like they had to be speeding because the the amount of time of which that I looked both ways and then the car was there was so small that there was no like it wasn't like, oh, it was like 30 minutes ago and I'm just not looking like it was literally like starting now. Boom, car like it was that quick. Uh, so the car honks at me, which technically through traffic laws Yes, they like if we got in an accident, insurance would be in their favor because technically I was parked, so I don't have to ride away. But it was just still insane because like there was like if you were doing the speed limit, sir, you because he wasn't even like on the road that I was like he was turning from a red light onto the road of where I was at. So it was also just like if like if you were going on the road that I was on this whole time, I would have seen you and I wouldn't have pulled out like you. You came out of nowhere. So he honks at me. And, but for some reason, he lets me go out. So I start driving and he's riding my ass the whole time, because that's what you do when you know you're in the wrong, but you still want to be upset at people. So you just ride right behind their car. And. this. This is the this is the part of the story where I'm going to acknowledge that I was being very petty uh, and sometimes keeping it petty will go wrong uh, very quickly for you because uh, he starts trying to speed up. This is a two lane road. So like the opposite lane is go is the other way. And he starts trying to, he goes into that lane to try to speed up past me. My petty kicks in because I'm like, you know what? I, I think it was like a combination of like I was being petty. And also I had yeah. such a hard week that week that I was like, <laughs> this was the one moment in my life where I felt like I could have control. Like it's always really on the road. <laughs> I always, I always <laughs> joke when like people don't let you merge into your lane or or people are slow or like they won't let like they won't let you merge into your uh, in their lane or they won't let you like turn or things like that. Like I always think to myself, like, do you really think this is going to save your marriage? Like it's you're you're like you not letting me merge in front of you w- when we're supposed to be zipper merging. Uh, that's not going to make your wife uncheat on you. Like it's it's it, there's no turning back. Like it, it happened. Right. I understand that this is the one moment of your life where you can find control, but this isn't going to, this isn't going to make your life any less sadder. In fact, it's made it more, more sad. Uh, so that being said, uh, in my situation, this doesn't apply. <laughs> uh, that this doesn't, even though I made that whole speech, I'm still, you know, I'm still, I'm a good person. Yeah. Uh, it made you uncheat. I guess yeah, it she, made, she it, made on you. it made all of the people who previously wronged me. It just washed that away. Uh, yeah, of course. And no, I was purely being petty. So I was like, you know what? No, I'm not going to let this guy do me like that. Also, I will say it was actually it was not an SUV. It was like a truck. It was a big truck with bright, very bright lights. So my immediate assumption was this is a redneck white dude because the only people in Seattle who have big trucks are usually redneck white dudes who live outside of the city and for some reason are in Seattle for whatever reason. Uh, yeah. 
So because of that, this also kind of came like a personal, like, you know what, I'm a fight systemic racism and I'm not going to let this guy take my lane like that. So I started speeding up. Um, And so then he can't pass me. And then we're basically racing on a street. Um, Mm. I think uh, like I, I wouldn't even say racing like we're it's a 20 mile per hour speed limit and we're going maybe 40. Um, and like, once again, I'll acknowledge this is incredibly reckless and irresponsible, uh, but I'm petty <laughs> and I want to win. Uh, and there was no other car. Like if there was other cars on the road or there was people walking about, then I would have done this. Yeah. Uh, but there was no cars on the road and I wasn't like yeah. watching him. Like I was looking at the road. Cause if someone was going to, I wasn't going to get in an accident because I wanted to be petty. Uh, yeah. yeah. So then he realized that there's a car coming. He realized he's not going to be able to lap me. So then he has to go right behind me to which then I think, oh, if this is if this is what heroin feels like, I get it. <laughs> hey, yo, Chris, let me take you to the Bronx real quick. If this is what you think it feels like. <laughs> if this is in that moment, I thought to myself, if this is anything what cocaine feels like, I get it now. Like, I get it. Like, you know what? Fine. Y'all got me. I'll try it. Like, I've never done it. I'll try it. Because, man, I the just, oh, I like, I wanted to, like, I almost wanted to pull over just to get out of my car and start dancing. Like, that's how good I felt. <laughs> but it's yeah. such a stupid thing that, like, yeah. all road rage is stupid like all road rage is stupid and pointless it honestly like no matter where you're like no but they did this and that, it's stupid it's it, like we're all you're getting angry because we're going from point a to point b and they got in the lane that you didn't want them to like who ca- we're all gonna die in five years because the world's gonna explode so like this doesn't matter so he has to get behind me and then i think cool i won it's whatever i have to turn now anyway so this is actually perfect timing uh, so when I turn, I notice he turns too. So I'm like, you know what? This is a popular road. This is just a coincidence. I go to the yeah. light. He's right behind me at the light. But we didn't have to wait that long. Like literally as soon as we put up to the light, it turns green. So then when it turns green, I go straight. And I'm thinking he's going to take a right to go on the main road. He doesn't. He follows me. And I'm just like, oh, okay, this guy's pissed. All right. Hold on. This is before you've picked up your food. This is, bef- this is before I picked up my food. Okay, got you, got you. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so then I pull up, and as I get super close to the restaurant, there's one last light that I have to get to before getting to the restaurant. And he's still following me. And then finally, when we get to the light, once again, it's a two-lane road. So the opposite lane is the going the wrong way. And there's like sure. a bus in that lane, parked, letting people off. While this is happening, he goes into the opposite lane, the pool side by side to me. And then I turn because obviously just like how he's curious to see what piece of shit did this. I'm curious to see who did this um, pull up. He rolled his windows already rolled down. He was ready for this. He's he's mm-hmm. been waiting six <laughs> blocks to yell. Yeah. Uh, I roll down my window because honestly, I thought this is Seattle. What's going to happen to me? Like, yeah. no one wants to make eye contact here. What, a drive-by is going to happen? No, there's so many witnesses here. I'm fine. Um, mm-hmm. Rose, a pu- guy pulls up. First of all, first note, it was a black dude. I was a little disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I was just oh, like, yo, man. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> if I would have known. Yo, you didn't throw me the head down. If I would have known. <laughs> yeah. If I want to know, what are you doing driving a Ford F-150? You, you like, what, what is going on here? Like, are you borrowing this from a friend? Have you exclusively dated white women? Like, why do you have a Ford <laughs> F-150? Like, I'm not saying black men don't own trucks. They do. But they're not Ford F-150s, I feel like. I feel like, that, like Chevy, maybe. But, um, yeah, so he pulls up. So I see that he's black. I'm a little disappointed. Actually, no, he pulls up. I didn't even have my window down yet. He starts yelling. So then I'm just like, like an idiot. I'm like, no, I want to hear the insults. <laughs> and I just I roll down my window. <laughs> like, no, 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 sir. Uh, can you repeat all of the hateful things you said to me? I have my window up, my one layer of protection. Um, so he starts cussing me out. And then I tell him like, bro, like you almost hit me. And then you wanted yeah. to have this speed off. 
like and he was just like learn to drive and starts yelling at me and before i could even say anything in response something he hurled something at my face it like like he hurled it from the driver's seat yeah so he hurled it perfectly and was he he didn't overhand throw he underhand yeah. Through because his hand was lifting but, up from the seat, and I thought, Oh my god, does he have a gun? Like, am I going to get shot over a, a small traffic violation, which has happened a, like a lot in history where people yeah. have gotten killed over traffic violations? So I was just like, This is the dumbest. Like, to go multiple years in COVID and not die from COVID, but <laughs> from <laughs> a gun. Also, this is recent, recent. Yeah, this was recent, recent. This was this was last year. Yeah. This was last year. Gotcha. Um, and I I thought like yeah, this would be a dumb way to die during a pandemic. Um, and but then he, he it was he was lifting up the hurls underhand throw something. Not only does it by the fly way, out his passenger. By the way, side note for those of you guys who are listening who like me went to public school, hurl means to throw. Cause he's been throwing that word around very confusingly. Sorry, I've been I want playing to clarify. Wordle a lot, so just my vernacular <laughs> has been upgrading so much. I didn't mean to be stunting on y'all so hard. Uh, uh, maybe next Go time ahead. I'll stop reading books before I go on this podcast. <laughs> So I like how you make this note of like, oh, I went to public school, so I need to define this word. Revisionary is a is it's it's not a basic word. Like that's a that's like at least a high school reading level. Like that's you know, bro. I didn't say I didn't go to a specialized public school. I mean, I'm just saying there's levels to this. Okay, fair, fair, fair. Uh, so then he hurls it. It not only goes through his passenger window, but then it goes through my driver window. Hits me directly in the face. Uh-huh. Directly in the face. I'm wearing glasses. So because I'm wearing glasses, it hits me so dead on that it knocks my glasses off a little bit. Like, not fully off, uh-huh. but like, yeah, yeah. They're, they're definitely like... I'm not going full Velma from Scooby-Doo, but like I'm definitely yeah. like, and here's the thing. I don't care how tough you are and I don't care who fights you. If you are wearing glasses and someone knocks off your glasses, you immediately lost the fight. Like there's, I don't care what <laughs> happens after that. You lost, like there's no cool way to get your knock, your glasses knocked off and then still be like, yeah, but I'm going to still win this fight. Nope. Just uh, you lost. You lost. I don't care if you're bigger and clearly going to beat this person up. You lost. Your glasses got knocked off. So he threw it. And then as I'm like in shock of like, what the hell just happened? He immediately drives off going the wrong way because there's multiple cars in front of me. So he drives the wrong way through a red light and then drives like so I was on a two lane street. He takes a left sure. running a red takes a left which means that he's going the opposite way on a very busy one-way street and then like pulls into a parking garage to like i guess drive around and keep going uh so it was not only like he like assaulted me but then almost got into an incredibly worse car accident because he did he yeah. broke so many traffic law which that whole yeah. thing also made me realize like okay i feel less bad about being in legally being in the wrong because clearly he hasn't been obeying any sort of traffic laws. Wait, but what did he throw? A half-eaten apple. <laughs> and see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Once again, this is before I got food. <laughs> this is before I got food. So you ate it? And, and like, here's the thing. One, I was in the shock of like, I can't believe this just happened to me. But I couldn't even... Like with between the adrenaline rush and the fact that that isn't a traumatic experience. Like I could even like feel like a victim because I was too busy being like, who the hell throws an apple? Like, why? <laughs> why? Like in the fact that it was half eaten too, which means that like he's hungry. Like he did the rest of that drive hungry. That was his snack. He brought that apple. For a purpose. <laughs> he didn't even finish his meal. That's how angry he was. Do you know how angry you got to be to throw your food that you paid for at somebody while like halfway through? 
Like meaning he's tasted it. And it was a Granny Smith apple too. So it wasn't just like a, it wasn't like a red delicious or something where it's like, you're honestly doing me a favor by throwing it at me. Like it wasn't like that. It was a Granny Smith, which in my opinion, Granny Smith is a top apple. It's a delicious apple. So the fact that he threw it and I, I saw it. So like I, the apple fell on me. I grabbed it real quick and it didn't feel like a cheapo apple. Like it felt organic. And then like I threw it at his car as this sign of like, like, you know, when people like push you into a, like, I've never been pushed into a locker, but like in the movies where they push someone in a locker and then when the bully walks off, they're just like, yeah, you better walk away. Like, that's how that felt. Like, it's just like, yeah. why did I throw <laughs> the only evidence I could have shared with the police? Also, I knew that I couldn't even, Cause like I yelled out my window, I was swearing at him, people around like looking like what, what just happened. And I just knew like, I'm not someone who like, like, I, I don't want to call the cops on a, on a black man, but also I knew I couldn't because there's no way to not have the police laugh in your face. <laughs> <laughs> When you're just like, I got assaulted. Who was the suspect? It was a it was a bald black man driving a truck. Okay, all right. Uh, how did he sure, assault you? Fictitious. What did he throw at you? A half eaten apple. Hello, hello, uh, hello. Please, are you there? <laughs> I think you hung up. <laughs> I called him back. Hey, I think you all hung up on me. Yeah, no, we did that on purpose. <laughs> We're not wasting our time on this. Are you kidding me? No, of course not. <laughs> Wait, so what happened next? So then I just went to go get fucked. Like, I just waited at this phone place. <laughs> so upset. So angry. I finally get my food. I get my food. I get back to my girlfriend's place. I realized that the pho place did not give me chopsticks. Uh, so then I'm just eating pho with a fork. And I'm, and I'm and like my girlfriend at her apartment, she didn't have a microwave. So I was eating cold pho with a fork. Just so upset but also at the it was weird because i was so upset but i was also but i was also like kind of like coming down from a traumatic moment yeah. but then also i was like laughing because i was like of course like of of course i experience the Wa- washington which the state of washington is an apple capital like it produces so yeah. much so many apples for the nation so like of course I have experienced the Washington Seattle version of a drive by. Hold on. So before we go down this rabbit hole, uh go ahead. I'm gonna say the stage is yours again. Go ahead and retell us your story. Uh so honestly, if I had to retell this story, uh like if I could change right, retell you mean like how I would do it differently? Yeah, yeah. What would what would, what would I would have gotten KFC DoorDash? Like that's that's just <laughs> That's what this whole the whole moral of this story isn't. Hey, don't have road rage. Uh, that's not the moral of the story. Everyone thinks that's the moral. Of the, no, the moral of the story is sometimes it's literally the best thing for your health to get fast food because the fact that I was like, no, not only am I going to save money on delivery and I'm going to drive to this restaurant, I am also going to get a healthier option than the clear because like KFC not only would have been. Uh, it would have been the quickest option. Like I would have gotten that much sooner than cause it was like already like a 40 to 50 minute wait to get the pho. And then once it got closer, then I left my apartment. Whereas KFC would have taken 20 to 30 minutes max to deliver to my apartment. So because I wanted to be healthy and because I wanted to save money, I got assaulted with a apple. <laughs> you know, you know what's my favorite part about all this is the fact like I wonder if at any moment like it crossed this guy's mind like he's like yo I hate this guy so much that I might possibly give him COVID you know what I mean like he he just I didn't even think about that I had his germs on my face yeah yeah (laughs) he could have been a spreader and actually if if that if I would have caught COVID because of that that would have been hilarious that i would just email the cdc and be like okay i'm telling you this privately because i feel like if fox news hears this they're just gonna do have a whole parade about it so yeah. i'm gonna just i'm gonna just tell y'all and y'all do with this info how you want but like just so you know in seattle we got black people throwing apples with covid on them just <laughs> be careful out here 
These streets are wild. That's why people are like, oh, I'm from South Side Chicago where we got murders happening every day. Oh, I'm from the Bronx where if you walk on the wrong street, you might get jumped. Oh, I'm from, uh, what's another hard place? Oh, I'm from Long Beach. Is Long Beach or Vince Staples? Let's say Compton. Okay, Compton. so like Com- I'm from Compton where it's just like you wear the wrong color, you're going to get jumped. Yo, bro, I'm from Seattle where if you don't let trucks pull in front of you, they're going to throw apples at you. <laughs> You know, by the way, here's, here's the other thing. When you said, like, uh, like, here's the thing. I'm not saying the black people don't drive trucks. Like, that is not at all what I'm saying. But the way Chris set this up, and then he goes, it was a black guy. My first thought was, like, oh, Clayton Bigsby was driving this car. <laughs> that's, that's what's going on. <laughs> Once again, it's not that black people don't drive trucks, but it's so <laughs> rare that when you do see a black guy drive a truck, you notice. Like, that's how rare it is. I get it, Chris. What you're saying is he might have played lacrosse instead of football. Like, I, I get what you're saying here. <laughs> Let's just say he's been to more Toby Keith shows than Kendrick Lamar shows, for sure. <laughs> He just let's just say let's just say he he wishes players would shut up and dribble like that's yeah, yeah. he's the one <laughs> he's the guy who when racist people say racist things they're like I have a black friend that's the black friend <laughs> that's the black friend <laughs> that's him so um all right Chris, also uh, uh, also I real let, quick I will ahead, say a couple more things. Uh, things I would do read if I had to retell the story yeah. with things I would do yeah. differently. First and foremost, I would have just said, I'm not going to be healthy. I'm going to get fast food. If for some reason yeah. I was still like, I'm going to still go get pho and the interaction happened, I would have just went, just go, just go. So then the truck would have been tailing behind me. If for some reason I went in front of them and we drove fast and I decided to still be petty and then he pulled up to my side, I think. The biggest, the two lessons I've learned from this story is one, if you're deciding between getting a healthier option and picking it up from the restaurant or getting fast food, get fast food. Um, Two, the second lesson is if you're going to have a road rage incident with someone and they're going to pull up right next to your car, this may seem like the cowardly move, but take it from me, a victim of assault. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> keep your windows rolled up and and do not make eye contact or if you're gonna roll down your windows do like a little bit now i know because like if i wouldn't have rolled because i rolled my window completely down so i yeah. allow like i i'm not saying like i know that sounds uh str- like similar to like when people are like oh well you shouldn't have dressed that way like i'm not saying that because i rolled the window down i i allowed an apple to hit me but i did remove literally the only barrier the fence <laughs> that i have like literally the <laughs> only level of defense i had i removed uh i mean i will say that by lowering your window you did allow it to happen i mean you might not have deserved it but you did in fact allow it to happen it's yeah like n- now i know if i'm gonna roll down the window just a smidge like just so then i can hear <laughs> what they're saying yeah. but they can't throw anything um so yeah. those are the lessons I learned. <laughs> well, uh, I want to say thank you for uh, joining us on the podcast. Before I let you go officially, uh, we have two traditions on this podcast. Uh, really quickly, first, we like to highlight a charity or an organization. Uh, usually, it uh, it's something that our guest is passionate about or cares about. Do you have a charity or an organization for us? Uh, yeah, it's my Venmo account. Um, it's none of them. So this actually, this charity... Uh, I found out about uh, last year and started donating to. Uh, it's called Friends of the Children. It's a national charity, um, but they do have a Seattle location. And essentially what this charity does, is it, it's, I mean, there's a lot like this charity where it's like benefiting kids who like live. I'm trying to find like an about section that perfectly describes um uh, so basically like it helps kids who are less fortunate or just like in low income areas um, through it's like similar in the sense of big brother and big sister and all that. But the huge difference is that the mentor that they assign these children are not volunteers. Uh, the mentors are paid professionals, meaning their job is to be a mentor for this child. 
And they pair these mentors with the children at a young age, like elementary school. And, st- and as long as there's not like any issues or the kid no longer wants the service anymore, they stick with these kids until high school graduation. Okay. Uh, perfect. Uh, the second tradition we have on this podcast, uh, this is the one I didn't tell you about, is uh, we usually ask our guests for a quick childhood story that puts a smile on their face. So the first thing that comes to your mind. Mm. Oh, that's so sweet and wholesome. Oh, my God. <laughs> Isn't it? That's so sweet. Uh, it's funny because when you do comedy, you never think about wholesome things that have happened yeah. to you. You always think about what's the weirdest thing <laughs> or saddest thing that so I can make it funny. But wholesome. Yeah. I guess like when I was nine, I think I was nine or something. I had a birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese, which now yeah. sounds sad. Uh <laughs> because Chuck E. Cheese is where you go when you're divorced and you're trying to show your kids that you're the fun parent. So you take them to Chuck E. Cheese because Chuck E. Cheese is just an arcade that sells terrible pizza and has horrific nightmare inducing animatronics. Um, and it's just a cesspool for whatever. Like the fact that COVID didn't come from Chuck E. Cheese is astounding. Um, but as a kid, it's like the greatest thing. Uh, and I loved it. And I think just the fact that like I had, it was like, not only was I at Chuck E. Cheese, which also every Chuck E. Cheese has velvet ropes at the entrance. Like it's a club. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, I think the fact that not only was I at Chuck E. Cheese, but my friends were there and it was a birthday party, my birthday party, which growing up, my mom was a single mom. So she couldn't really afford to give us a birthday party. So because of that, I don't make a big deal of my birthday because I'm just used to not celebrating my birthday. Uh, so the fact that I was getting to have a birthday party and it was at Chuck E. Cheese, like I remember like the that day, the pizza tasted extra better. The, uh, like the Chuck E. Cheese mascot came out for me and would, like gave me a hug. And like I got one of what well, I got something that was like one of my favorite toys for a while, which was like an Apache helicopter from the Godzilla movie, which is. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Is a combination of words I didn't think I would say. <laughs> like, it wasn't my favorite because it was from the Godzilla movie. It just happened to be from the Godzilla movie. But I do distinctly remember playing with that toy for a very, very, very long time. Um, so that was probably my, f- like, that was a great childhood memory of just, like, that was one of my favorite birthdays. That one, and there was a birthday party at a bowling alley that was also, like, one of my favorite birthdays. You know, it, it's uh, it's interesting to hear you uh, talk about Chuck E. Cheese that way because while I do acknowledge that it is not the greatest place on earth, uh, for my family growing up, uh, going to Chuck E. Cheese was a treat. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, we're balling out tonight. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I mean, it's an expensive place, and like, I don't know how like when yeah. your upcoming was, but at least for like for my like my mom was a single mom, and then when I would go visit my dad, he's like obviously a single dad. Like so for either one of them, but they took us to Chuck E. Cheese. Like it wasn't an everyday thing. Like that that was yeah. expensive. So like I only say it's sad as an adult because you're just looking at yeah, it yeah, yeah. from an adult like point of view. Good. That is the perspective you should have as an adult. I just want you to know that. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> you're you an can't adult, be you should... paying taxes and then be like, yo, y'all want to go to Chuck E. Cheese? It sounds lit. Like, oh, Fact. You, that's what I'm saying. You need a restraining <laughs> order put on you. Like, you should not be allowed within 100 feet of a Chuck E. Cheese or anything like it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not saying I'm wrong for viewing it as sad. I think you can only the only people who should find Chuck E. Cheese cool are children. But, like, that's what Chuck E. Cheese is for, so. I will say this. I have a good buddy. Uh, shout out to Tyler. You know who you are. Uh, who uh, One of my favorite memories with him is uh, when, <laughs> when we were in law school together. Uh, you went to law school? We decided. Yeah, we don't need to talk about that. We all make mistakes. Mine's costing me $150,000. But, anywho. <laughs> um, <laughs> we were in law school together, and... Uh, one day, I guess we were both off. Like, we didn't have class. It was like a random Wednesday or something like that. So, at 10 a.m., we decided we were going to start partying at 10 a.m. and drove over to this, like, Chuck E. Cheese knockoff and just played laser tag for four hours. 
and it was one of our greatest days together. Honestly, that's that's what Chuck E. Cheese was missing. Real <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese has never had laser tag. It was always the non right. family centers that had <laughs> yeah. a laser tag. So I will say, like, if Chuck E. Cheese had laser tag, then I would maybe view it more positively as an adult. Yeah. But, um <laughs> Yeah, it's a sad place. <laughs> And the pizza's so, not even um, so. It's just like it's. What are you selling? It's not. <laughs> it, they're, they're not selling anything. You know this. Also, Chuck E. Um, Cheese is real quick. Chuck E. Cheese is a great allegory. Like it's a great allegory for children to know what being an adult is like. Because you go to Chuck E. Cheese and you have tokens, and it's like you only have a certain amount of tokens. You can either use the tokens to play the fun games, but the fun games give you little to no tokens, or you can spend your your uh tokens on playing the boring games that give you a lot of tokens i mean a lot of tickets and you can use that to get prizes so you have to choose it's like how in the real world it's like do you want to do a job that you're actually going to love and feel fulfilled and feel like you're passionate about and you're actually enjoying every day so much to the point where it feels like you're not even really working at all well it's going to pay you jack um, or <laughs> you do the job that you hate and you're only purely doing because uh, it compensates you more, but like you don't feel fulfilled. You don't feel happy. You're honestly wondering why am I even here? Uh, but it will pay you a lot. Uh, so it kind of teaches kids about that. And then it teaches kids that uh, there's going to be all of these prizes you want, but you're never going to be able to afford uh, unless you work really, 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 really hard for a very long time to get all of these tickets to get something that once you get it, you're just like, oh, I don't think this was worth it. <laughs> so more of this whole story is uh, I've used context clues to figure out what the word allegory means. So that's where, <laughs> that is the grand takeaway here. <laughs> Chris, I want to say thank you so much for coming on to the Thanks podcast. Thanks for having me. Uh, before I let you go, do you have any last words for the revisionaries? Um, eating healthy will not necessarily live lead to a uh a safer life um sometimes it's better to just get things delivered or else you're gonna get assaulted um uh, and then also chuggy e. cheese is sad uh but take your kids to it because your kids will love it uh so yeah. don't let your adult point of view ruin something for kids there we go well said well uh I'm just going to say thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of your day, Chris. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. The Revisionary Podcast. Really? That's what we're doing now? We're throwing bits of chewed apple at people? Um, That is okay. Things have, okay, things have gotten wire. We're, I mean, I guess that's just the state of the world now. We're just throwing apples at people. But anywho... Thank you guys for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure that you like and subscribe on Apple Podcasts and make sure that you follow us on social media. And, you know, message message me, message the, you know, the Revisionary Podcast, message the team, let us know. You know, maybe message Phil. Let him know why he's your favorite uh, podcast producer in the whole entire world. I don't know. But just let us know what you guys liked. And uh, thank you for listening, Revisionaries. And as always, have fun. This is the Revisionary